What is the most important liability account Warren Buffett analyzes when looking at a balance sheet? The short-term debt. He pays attention to a company's short-term debt more than any other liability account. Now, why is short-term debt most important to Warren? Warren realizes that companies that require considerable amount of short-term debt to fund their day-to-day -day operations are not great companies to invest in, and they provide weak returns over time. Now, why is that? Ideally, if a company is profitable and a cash-generating machine, it would show very little short-term debt on its balance sheet because it would be able to fund its operations out of its own bank account through its own cash generations, not reliant on short-term bank debt. Basic Finance says that a company which is profitable doesn't need a lot of bank debt to operate, right? To Warren, cash generation is what separates a mediocre company from a great company. Warren cares about a company's ability to generate cash over anything else. As such, this is why Warren spends a considerable amount of time looking at the trend of a company's cash to short-term debt. This is how Warren staked his reputation as one of the greatest investors of all time. What Warren is looking out for, a bad thing to look for, is a company that has increasing cash, but also increasing bank debt over a period of seven to 10 years, because that indicates the company is reliant on the bank debt to fund its operations, okay? That is what is adding to the cash balance, bank debt not purely money from its own operations. If the bank cut off funding to a company like that, the company would fail, okay? The bank is its lifeline. It needs it desperately because it can't generate the cash on its own to sustain life without it. Again, this is why Warren places great emphasis on analyzing a company's cash and short-term debt over time. Let's cover a few more things. We're gonna go through the balance sheet and the liability section of this video. My name is Nelson Alvarez. I am a CPA and executive management consultant. Here on the C-suite, my mission is simple, to put you in the C-suite. And I do that by providing you real world, actionable insights that will excel you to the corporate level. Now your time is valuable, so let's keep moving. Now I know I just mentioned that short-term debt coupled with cash is Warren's favorite trend to look at, but I can't harp on this strong enough. It's so important. It doesn't matter what industry a company is in, really. If you look at a company's balance sheet and see increasing cash coupled with a corresponding increase in short-term debt, it means the company is reliant on bank loans to fund its operations. That is not healthy. That is not what Warren wants to see. And that's what you should be looking out for as an investor to really protect yourself. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad company to invest in. It doesn't mean that at all. What it just means is that it's gonna take a long time to get your money back if you decide to invest in it, okay? It doesn't have a very good return on equity. Again, you, as well as Warren, are gonna look at this cash to short-term debt trend over a period of seven to 10 years. If a company has competent management and has a product that people want, there is zero reason why over a period of seven to 10 years, a company should become less reliant on bank loans and more reliant on its own cash generating business activities. All companies have short-term debt, all of them, and that's totally okay. However, what you want to see is short-term debt decreasing over time while cash is going up. We want to see a company start to become less reliant on bank loans to operate, okay? It's going to be a successful company if it can rely on its own cash generation through its operating activities. If you're not seeing that, that means there's something wrong with management, the product, or the company, okay? It's a telltale sign. It's an acid test, really. Now, in prior videos and prior examples, I used the balance sheet of Apple to kind of go through what an ideal financial statement would look like. Apple has an incredible financial statement, okay? Warren loves this company. It's his largest holding, all right? So we're gonna go through it right now and look at the liability accounts of Apple to see just how good its cash generation or how little or large its short-term debt balance is, okay? Let's judge it like Warren would. Looking here at Apple's cash balance first, from 2015 to 2020, it has nearly doubled its cash balance from 20 billion to $40 billion. Now that's really incredible, okay? But remember what I just teach you, the first question to ask is, okay, yes, cash increased, but is that a result of it taking on short-term loans to fund its operations, okay? We don't wanna be fooled now, so let's take a look at the short-term fund balance to see if that also has increased by 20 billion over the last five to six years. Looking at the current liabilities section for Apple, what we're essentially looking for is short-term debt. Apple calls that its commercial paper, okay? And that's essentially corporate loans, short-term debt, same thing here. Now you can do a ratio if you want to, but you can see that over the last couple years that its cash balance to short-term debt is low and steady. It's on average 8 billion over six years, where uh, you can see its cash balance actually doubled from 20 billion to 40 billion. 
so we can definitively say that Apple is not reliant on short-term loans to fund its operations. That is a good sign. This tells you everything you need to know pretty much right away. Okay, it doesn't need bank loans to operate. It can pretty much self-finance. Let's keep going through our analysis, just like Warren would. You're looking at accounts payable, uh, other liabilities, and deferred revenue. Not really much to be gained here, okay? You can compare it to other competitors, but again, to Warren, there's nothing really special in these accounts that would indicate something to him whether this company uh, is worth investing in. Now, an additional debt account that Warren actually does not like to see on a company's balance sheet is the current portion of long-term debt. What this means is that a company took out a very large um, long-term loan and it has to make uh, annual or periodic payments on it, typically over a course of five to 15 years. Why is Warren leery or suspicious of seeing this account on the balance sheet? Well, seeing that the company has a current portion of long-term debt due, indicates that the company has long-term debt uh, to begin with. Warren really scrutinizes companies that have long-term debt on its books, and he asks a lot of questions about it. Now, if Warren sees a company that has increasing short-term debt year over year, it indicates that the company can't finance its daily operations, okay? That's a concern to Warren. Now, an even bigger red flag is to see that short-term debt coupled with long-term debt. Generally, increasing short-term debt coupled with increasing long-term debt indicates an unsustainable position for the company in the long term. Now, Warren says this is not a great long-term investment, okay, because a lot of the interest payments and principal payments over the next five to 15 years are going to be going towards paying off that debt, okay? It's just not a great investment for Warren. Now, why is that necessarily uh, not a great thing for Warren? Why doesn't he like to see that? It's because that all that cash is going to pay off debt. It's not necessarily going into building the business or appreciating the stock price, okay? That's why Warren kind of stays away from those companies, right? He's looking for stock price appreciation and some dividend distributions, right? A company that's constantly pouring its money back into paying long-term debt isn't gonna give that to him, okay? It's just not a great investment. Not a bad company, it's just not a great investment. Now the irony with which I was just talking about how bad it is to see long-term debt, let's go look at Apple and see that its long-term debt is $100 billion and actually eclipses its cash amount, okay? I'm not a hypocrite here, I just wanna point something out very interesting into why this is actually okay and why Warren actually loves to see this type of long-term debt. You have to understand that while you can't see it here on the balance sheet, Apple generates so much cash from its operations that the majority of it is actually held overseas. Now what that means is that if Apple were to actually bring back and repatriate that money from overseas into the US, it would be taxed to the tune of billions of dollars. Now Apple obviously doesn't wanna pay it, okay, right? It wouldn't be smart financial management to do so. However, the shareholders in the company demand a return on investment, okay? They want to get some of that cash dividend back. They want to get some of that stock appreciation back so that they can sell it and make their profit, okay? The needs of the shareholders necessitate Apple doing something to bring part of that money back and just get a return for the people that invested in the company, okay? That's called shareholder value. That's what Apple is trying to do. So it's really uh, genius what Apple did, okay? It has such an incredible balance sheet. It essentially went to the bank and it said, hey, here's my balance sheet. I do have $100 billion in technically cash sitting overseas. Can you loan me $100 billion so that I can issue dividends and buy back stock? And then you can use my cash overseas as collateral. Now, obviously Apple is good for the money, so the banks agree, okay? They essentially give them a $100 billion loan. Further, Apple's interest rate, it's charged on that debt, is practically nothing, okay? So it really cost it nothing to take on this money and to reissue dividends and then use its cash flow from operations to pay off that loan, okay? The second double whammy it gets is that the interest on, this, uh, this, on these loans is tax deductible, okay? So Apple really made off like a bandit here. This is why we're in love what it did, okay? It's okay that it's $100 billion of long-term debt in its books because it got a great financing agreement and it's using that to really buy back stock and appreciate its price and issue dividends. So that's okay in Warren's book. So that increasing debt that you see on Apple's balance sheet is really just it, taking on that money to buy back stocks and to issue dividends. This long-term debt balance is actually not a bad thing at all. It's actually a very smart financial move by Apple. Now it's a smart move by Apple because if it wanted to or if it needed to, it could actually pay back that $100 billion loan in a very short period of time. Now this move wouldn't work for every single company it only works for Apple because it's so profitable and because it's a cash generating machine. Now, the only reason that Warren likes this and is okay with Apple having $100 billion of long-term debt is because it passes his rule of thumb test. Warren's rule of thumb test is to take a company's net income, okay? It takes Apple's net income, multiplies it by three. If that number eclipses long-term debt, 
Warren is okay with it because it indicates that the company could use its profits to pay off that debt in a very short period of time if it needed to, all right? Apple's net income, if you look at in the income statement, is $50 billion a year, $50 billion a year. Multiply that by three, you get $150 billion. That eclipses the $100 billion of long-term debt due. So if Apple needed to, it could absolutely pay off that $100 billion in long-term debt. That's why Warren's okay with it. Now, if Apple's net income was only $10 billion, okay, that's a 10x multiple to its long-term debt. So according to Warren's rule of thumb test, it would take it 10 years to pay off that $100 billion debt. That's not so great. That doesn't make it look very attractive now, right? That's a long-term play. It indicates the company could be stretching itself just a bit too thin. So apply that rule of thumb test to really any company that you're analyzing, okay? Make sure that the net income could pay off the long-term debt in about two to three years if needs be. That means the company has taken on a healthy amount of debt that it can really service. Moving down the balance sheet, deferred taxes, other liabilities, minority interests, they're not gonna really give us much insight into the company, so we'll skip those. Moving on down, we're now getting into the shareholders equity section, okay? Shareholders equity is just assets minus liabilities, and that's your equity. This is essentially the company's book value. Larger shareholders equity is better, okay, but there are exceptions. Interesting point to note here is that Apple's equity is actually decreasing, okay? It's decreasing because it's actually buying back its stock using its retained earnings reserve, okay? Some may say, oh, this doesn't look great. Its equity is going down. It must be losing money. No, it's just buying back its stock and that's actually gonna push its stock price up simply due to supply and demand. It's a good thing to see this. Just because a company has decreasing equity doesn't mean it's losing money, okay? In this case, it's buying back its stock and the company's appreciating in value every day. This is why Warren loves Apple. Your typical common stock, we know what that is. Preferred stock, I do wanna talk about preferred stock for one moment. Warren never ever wants to see preferred stock. No company should really have preferred stock without uh, an incredible unimpeachable reason. Preferred stock is like a loan. I want you to think about that. For all intents and purposes, it really acts like a business loan on paper, okay? It's just called preferred stock for vagary of reasons. The issue with preferred stock is that you usually have to issue dividends under it to shareholders, okay? The dividends paid on preferred stock are not tax deductible, unlike the interest on long-term debt. And the problem with preferred stock is that they act like loans, okay? They act like loans, but through that provision, you have to issue dividends to shareholders, okay? Dividends issued by preferred stock are not tax deductible, unlike the interest paid on bank debt, okay? Interest paid on bank debt is tax deductible, all right? Seeing that preferred stock and bank debt are essentially the same thing, One's tax deductible for interest purposes, the other's not. It doesn't make any accounting or economic sense as to why you would even issue preferred stock. You would just get bank debt instead. It's so much cheaper, okay? So when Warren sees preferred stock on a balance sheet, he really just scratches his head. He's like, well, why didn't you just take out a bank loan? It's cheaper, okay? If you see that, it tends to indicate some type of financial uh, incompetence or mismanagement by the company. So keep an eye out for that and really ask questions as to what it's doing there. Maybe they have a good reason, who knows? So you really gotta figure that out on your own. Looking at retained earnings, retained earnings is simply just the cumulative uh, effect of all the net income, how much profit the company has made over its lifetime. You obviously ideally wanna see this going up because that means every year you're just padding the company up and up with your net income, with your profit. Again, just a cumulative total of all the profits you've made over the year and losses too, okay? plus minus, add and subtract to that cumulative total. Now I say generally you wanna see it going up, but it's actually going down for Apple. Okay, there are exceptions and that's okay. The dividends Apple is issuing uh, are decreasing its retained earnings. That's okay, right? Apple's very valuable. It needs to put dividends out in the market. That's what makes it such a great investment. That's why Warren attended for the first place, the dividend. Now if retained earnings is going down for any other reason, then the company's probably losing money. And you just look at the net income to see that the net income or loss, that's what's really gonna drive that number up or down. Although you can't really see it on the balance sheet, the last equity item we need to talk about is treasury stock, okay? Treasury stock, you can see in the cash flow statement, and I reviewed that in another video, so stay tuned for that. Treasury stock is equivalent to a stock buyback, okay? The company is essentially buying back the shares that it issued on the market, okay? So it's taking back all the shares it issued that it originally needed to raise cash, okay? Simple law of supply and demand, right? If I take, if the company starts buying back more stock, the value of the stock goes up, okay? Simple economics. Now, I really want you to think about why seeing treasury stock being purchased by the company is such a huge deal, okay? If you see the company buying up a lot of treasury stock, that indicates the company has excess cash to burn, okay? Normally, normally, and what anyone would expect, what Wall Street would expect, is that if a company has excess cash, 
it's going to be putting it towards its operations to expand its business, okay? But the fact that Apple is just buying back stock indicates that its company is in a very good position operationally, okay? Again, normally Wall Street wants to see a company expand its cooperations. The fact that Apple's taking in all its stock, expending cash on really appreciating its company really speaks volumes to Apple's financial success. This is one of Warren's favorite accounts. He wants to see the treasury stock number increasing over time. Remember, a company is only gonna be buying back its stock as a last resort. The company's first priority is operations. Apple's operations are solid. It makes so much cash from its operations it has nothing else to do with it, so it just buys back its stock, okay? Keep an eye out that for any company you're looking at in the market, okay? That's a real golden line item. That's really it for the balance sheet. This is everything that Warren looks for and also avoids when analyzing a company's balance sheet. And not to mention that Apple has an extremely ideal balance sheet, right? It's a cash-generating behemoth. It's what every company should be striving for. It's what every company wants its balance sheet to look like, and that should be the company's ultimate goal. In the next video, we're gonna cover the cash flow statement of Apple, and we're gonna see how the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow all integrate, and why the cash flow statement is the most important financial statement in Warren's favorite for really getting to know a company and to ensure that he's making a good investment in it. So I'll see you there.